Hi all, it's me Anne from Geeks of Green and welcome to my channel. Today I will be getting my hands dirty and doing some gardening within my balcony. I will be doing a series of these videos where I will come into my balcony and tackle problem plants, do some bit of gardening and probably share some tips with you as I go about doing it. So if you like these kind of videos, do comment down below so that we make more such videos for you. So let's get started. The first thing I see when I come to my balcony is that for some time it has been, uh, I have not pruned my plants and I need to give it a little attention. So the first thing I noticed was this uh, bougainvillea vine which is whining inside. You can see there's another one right here. This one is having some flowers on it. Always gives me flowers every springtime. Uh, there's a bouquet of flowers here, but this time it's very less, the leaves are very less, just few leaves. The plant is not, even the colour of the flower is slightly dull. So the plant hasn't been pruned and it needs a little bit of pruning, it needs a little bit of mud change and things like that. Which I will eventually do, but right now I need to cut off these stems that don't have many leaves on them. And they are growing inwards and they are damaging, because of the thorns on them, they are damaging my big leaf plants. So I am just going to cut it down. So I will be using my bypass shear, it uh, is called a bypass shear because it bypasses the blade like this and it gives a clean cut if you want to cut woody stems, this uh, shear is quite good to use. Um, I will be cutting as far as my hand can reach, probably uh, just below the main stem, I won't uh, cut the main stem. I'll just cut the base of this stem. This plant here that I've noticed is a plant that needs a lot of attention uh, because you can see that the top of it is completely bare, very sad and the vines have all gone everywhere. They are, I'll have, I, don't, I, I don't even know where they are so I'll have to probably gather them, cut them, prune them and propagate them again. This plant is looking really ugly right here because it's very scrawny so I have to do something about it. So this is one plant that I will be working on today. First I will try to find all the vines. They are all getting into different corners of uh, the pots and they have, I, I have no idea where they are. So I will uh, get the vines out first, that is my first task. Then I will move the plant and work on it. My goodness, <laughs> I can't get it. I tried removing the vines but they've grown so much that I'm not able to remove them. So I'm going to cut them, anyway I have to cut them and I will use these vines to fill up the entire top. So I'm going to cut them now. Since these are soft stem plants, I will simply use a scissor to cut. This was all that was growing which was cut off and left in the uh, in between of the other pots. I fished them out. So I've collected all of the synapses pictus vines now. Let's get started. Now I'm going to move on to my next plant. Uh, it has been growing in a clay pot but the plant is too big for the clay pot and it has fallen, it has toppled over. So I'm just going to try to get it. It's right behind on that shelf there. So I'm going to get it out first. Now I'll have to be careful because I think it's give, uh, sent out aerial roots into other pots 
so when i'm pulling it out i have to be a little careful you can see that this aerial root has buried itself into a moss pole i'll have to cut it to release it when there are such aerial roots it's okay to cut it these are extra roots that the plant gives out for extra nutrition so if you cut it nothing will happen to the plant now another plant that i've seen needs attention is my squamy ferum it is growing here i had put a moss stick which i had made by myself with wood and a little bit of hill moss tied up onto it but the wood is deteriorating it is uh, decomposing so i'm going to go in for a pvc pipe moss pole which will uh, stand direct and help the plant so that is one thing i have to do so i have noticed that there are a lot of ants on this plant as well so that reminds me another thing i need to do in my garden is do a pest control and get rid of the ants i usually do a herbal pest control to get rid of all the ants so it will be in different uh, points in my balcony and i don't have an ant problem because of that the reason i get rid of ants is because ants help mealybugs sustain themselves so if i want to get rid of mealybugs one of the diff many things i have to do is get rid of the ants So I've gotten rid of the chains that were there, so it's easy for me to work. And I can show you that the soil is pretty clay. So initially, when I was gardening, I used to mix clay soil with my other mediums, but I've stopped doing that now. Uh, so this is one of my old plants, and you can see how clay the soil is, and it has compacted also. So I'll be getting rid of most of the soil and putting in fresh soil, uh, so the plant will grow happily. before i start working i'm going to cut down most of the vines some are really very long and i don't want to keep it so long i'm going to trim it a little some vines are bare like this it doesn't have any leaves so i'm going to cut that off completely some have dried i'm going to cut that off and uh, i will keep a few vines that are growing healthy so i'll keep them these ones especially till where the leaves are there and then the bare parts will be cut off and then we will try to change the soil so let's cut the vines first these are the aerial roots some aerial roots have gotten into the soil i can keep them or i just want to cut them because they are all rooted here and they'll cause an obstruction so i'm just going to trim the aerial roots this is completely bare but see there are new shoots on this so i'm going to just cut it till here and i'm sure it will grow i'm not going to uproot it so i'm going to cut it somewhere close to the node uh here there are a lot of aerial roots so i'm going to probably plant it in like this and uh, fix it here so that it grows and this extra roots uh, this extra stem probably i'm going to uh, it's already broken so i'm going to cut it off it's already broken so there are a lot of aerial roots i'm going to be planting this back here. so this is how it's become right now just two vines i've cut it to the similar length uh, and i'm going to put more plants right here after changing the soil So let's quickly prepare the cuttings. If you want to see how, uh, you can see it in detail in my. I've done this many times in my other videos. I'll put some links down there for you. So just remember to cut close to the node, and uh, one leaf per node is also enough. These are the cuttings that I've got from this plant. Now, uh, try to keep in mind which side is the top side and which is the bottom side, so that you can plant it properly. Uh, the best thing to do is cut it and put it in a pot of water, so you know 
uh, how it grows and you can uh, then plant it accordingly i will be rooting this directly in soil i do not want to go through that extra step of putting it in water and then putting it in soil so that's just an added step so i'm just going to directly plant this in soil because the syndapsis pectus has always fared well in soil now all i'm going to do is uh, loosen the soil like this and empty it into this uh, container and discard the soil have to be careful not to damage the roots i'm using my fingers because it's easier for me to feel the roots and the soil is pretty uh, loose actually dry so ensure that you don't water the plant when you're doing all this it will be impossible to work with the plant has to be completely dry I didn't think that the entire the all of the mud is going to come out so easily. So anyway, this plant is bare rooted now. All the mud is out. I will donate all the mud to my uh, building gardener. He will use it in our building or uh, society garden. Now all I have to do is just fill it. It's a good mix of pumice and bark and vermi compost, perlite. coco peat and also coco chunks coco chips i'm going to use my fingers to just settle in the soil first we will plant the longer cuttings then we will know where to put the smaller ones If you want you can water the uh, mud a little and then put your cuttings in place but I'm more comfortable uh, uh, having it dry then I water it in the end because it sticks to my fingers and find it very difficult to work then I'm putting the longer stems towards the outside because uh, I can fill in the inside with the shorter ones Now I will uh, use this to hold it in place otherwise the cuttings will fall. So I always use this to hold it in place. These are uh, ties, metal uh, plastic coated metal ties that will uh, work very well in the garden especially for things like this. If you don't have these ties you can also open up a U clip, a metal U clip and use it only it will get rusted. I'm going to water it a bit. Since the soil mix is very dry right now, it will take it's hydrophobic and it will take a little bit more time for it to soak the water completely. What I'm doing is I'm just filling the place with a lot of cuttings. and uh, some of these will not survive they will die some will survive so i'm going to just overcrowd them sometimes these cuttings that don't have any leaves also root very well and uh, that is why i'll be poking a few of them here and there now i'm going to gently water it again uh, ensuring that the water doesn't uh, make the cuttings fall because it's just not rooted when i'm watering every day i'll be very careful while watering it i will be putting these small ties on the plants on the cuttings that i'm feeling uh, need a little bit extra support now one thing i'm going to do is i'm going to hang it in a spot where it gets good light and where there is not too much air flow which will dry up my cuttings and that spot is exactly where my pot is sitting right there so i worked on that plant some time back it was zero and i put cuttings now it's come it's established and rooted well and it's growing nicely the vines have not grown long yet but they have filled up the top is how i wanted to grow exactly now let's work on my philodendron squamiferum uh, i had made a makeshift moss pole uh, with hill moss and some twine tied up and uh, you can see it's completely rotten see that it's completely rotten I have to release the plant from it and just put a new moss stick. 
I have to be careful that I don't damage the plant when I am releasing it from the moss stick. I will be simply cutting the strings. Now that I've cut all the strings, I'm seeing that there are a lot of aerial roots that are still holding on to the moss stick. It's, this one is growing above the stem right here. So I might have to cut a few of them. Let's just try to release the plant slowly. I have separated the plant from the moss stick. I will be loosening the soil a bit. This is a good, uh, nice mix that I had used which is, uh, this is a considerably newer plant. So no clay soil in here, just all good things. I'm just going to give it a mix and probably at the end top up the soil. So now let's put the new moss stick in. This one I have got from the nursery. It's got a PVC pipe. It doesn't rot obviously. And it's covered in hill moss. Uh, this is an effective and nice uh, moss stick. I'm going to just put it near the plant. I'm using softer string to tie up the plant because uh, the string is what will hold the plant initially to the moss pole. And uh, if it's sharp, if it's metal or if it's like, you know, a little sharper, it might cut through the plant. So I'm not going to use that kind. The soft string is fine. Now what I'm doing here is I'm essentially, it's already a twisted stem. So I'm going to kind of let it go that way itself. Now I'll be topping up a little bit of soil into the pot. This is not a seaweed solution. This is not any type of fertilizer. It's just the water that I used to water the first plant, which I collected the drain, drained water. I'm reusing it for this plant. I won't be immediately fertilizing this plant because there's a lot of vermicompost in the soil mix. I'm just spraying the moss pole trying to dampen it. This is a plant that has aerial roots so it's misting is something that it really loves. So this here is my philodendron lacerum and it needs a bigger pot. It's been in this pot for a long time which is I think it's completely root bound and the plant is lacking nutrients. So it needs a bigger pot, fresh soil. I'm going to simply put it in a bigger pot. Now I always tell you guys that don't uh, change the pot from a small pot to a very big pot but you can see that the pot difference here is quite a bit. Uh, I usually go when I'm repotting uh, a root bound plant into a bigger pot I go with one or two inches more not uh, too huge now this one is really quite big compared to this pot but I'm going with this pot for a reason is this plant is pretty big it's bulky and a smaller pot doesn't uh, hold this plant steady so I'm going to go for a bigger pot and I won't be putting soil to the very brim. So I'll be putting less soil in it and uh, then as the plant grows, I will add soil and use the full capacity of this pot. So the first thing we'll do is we'll get rid of all the aerial roots, the dried leaves and the all the things that don't, we don't want in our plant. We we'll just trim it off and uh, then repot it. I'm going to loosen the soil and just get it out. The whole pot is full of roots. I'm realizing that this or uh, this mud that I've used is more of a clay and sandy mix which I won't use in my uh, main mix. It's more of, uh, it's got a lot of sand, so I'm going to discard this. You can see how root bound the plant was. The roots have all grown. I'm just loosening it very gently. Now it's time to water it.
I really hope that you enjoyed gardening with me today. If you want to check on plant updates of what happens to these plants that I've worked on, please follow me on Instagram because I will be putting updates over there as well. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, don't forget to subscribe as well. And comment down below, it really encourages us. Also hit the like button to make us happy. I hope to see you soon in another video. Till then, stay green.